welcome back. My hubby edits all my videos, puts them together for you to see. And he came in and he said to me, what do you want to call this one? And I said, oh, I'm calling this one Going Potty. And he walked out of the room and a couple of seconds later, he came back and he stood in the doorway and he said, really, that's what you want to call it? And he stood there smiling and I said, yes, that is what I want to call it. He did a big grin and he said, well, think about it. So I sat here processing that. <laughs> and then the light bulb went on. Okay, going potty. <laughs> that may not be what I want to show because <laughs> it could have other connotations. So I said to him, oh, well now I don't know because that took some brain power to come up with that one. So he said, okay, I'll go away and I'll have some brainstorming. Hence the title of this video, An Opulence of Pots, because he said, what is a collection of pots called? And I said, I have no idea. So that's why we have this title. <laughs> so here I am making me pots, going potty. There you are, I'm gonna say it. So I made six different types of pots and tried to use different materials in all of them. Some were successful, some were not, but you know, unless you try, you never know. <laughs> This pot I made by putting in crushed glass. Now this is the kind of glass that you can put in fireplaces or you can put in aquariums. You can find tons of it on Amazon. The reason I didn't give you the names of these particular crushed glasses was because I used to make things from fused glass and I had a special account where I ordered these things. Um, but as I say, you can find tons of it on Amazon. It comes under crushed glass, fireplace glass, or frit. That's spelled F-R-I-T, which is just a fancy way of saying crushed glass. This mould, it's one of the pudding jar moulds, and it is one of my favourite things. But, mm, this is maybe not the right stuff to put in it. I'll discuss that when we get to the unmolding part of this. So this jar, the idea was to get that sort of ombre effect going from light, medium, and then pale. And uh, you'll see in the unmolding, the pot that's in the middle there, that has iridescent, clear crushed glass in it. And it's, it's invisible <laughs> in the unmolding. And I was quite surprised. It was nice to see that effect. Um, I do like using crushed glass, but as I said, this was maybe not the project to use it in, and I will explain, as I said, later.
I like this little pot and again it's crushed glass and I loved this deep orange colour. Um, I didn't know if this would work, I thought it might be a bit misshapen but the glass seemed to have settled down into the resin quite nicely and this one was a success and I really like this one. Um, and also because I put all this glass in this mould, the finished product, it's heavy, it's put a lot of weight on the project so it feels as if the whole thing is made of glass, which was interesting. So I'm always telling you, when you have a mould that has a lip like that, get in there, get those bubbles out. Yep, see, I'm trying to get all the bubbles out, hoping that the glass will settle into the resin and avoid, you know, holes and things. Rosebuds. Oh, these are dried, obviously. You can buy them in varying quantities. And um, this one was somewhat of a success <laughs> but I'm trying to use as many different kinds of things to dump in the resin as I can get my hands on um, and if some of them are mistakes then you know that's basically how you learn what not to do so that you can find a better method and improve so I'm making these mistakes so you do not have to plus it's fun just to muck about with the resin I was also curious to see what kind of shape would come out of this because I'm really stuffing those rosebuds down in there. You know, I'm pushing them in and that bottom part is at capacity when I finish. At the same time, trying not to, you know, break up the rosebuds because they are a little bit fragile because remember they're dried. So they can still, they can be a little bit crumbly. But yeah, I'm really stuffing them down in there. It was amazing how many actually went into this tiny little mould. Yeah, another lid. I knew that the rosebuds would float, but I thought, what the heck, let's try it anyway. This pot, I have a similar one which is taller. I call it geometric pot, don't know what else to call it. But these colours, I really like these colours and I thought, hmm, I'll use those and I'll put in glitter. They are the same combination of colours and glitter that I used in my Galaxy Dragon when I did Year of the Dragon 2024. And they made a nice combination. So, I stuck them in this pot. So making the pot is fine. Just make sure you get the resin down in those lines. Clumsy me. <laughs> I am very clumsy. I'm always in such a hurry. 
And I think I work too close on top of myself. That's why I'm always knocking things over and bashing into things. Just the way I am. <laughs> so yes, get a spoon or something to get the resin down in those grooves. lid the lid is another story you've obviously got that little bobbly bit on the end which is the top part that's fine because you can manipulate it by squeezing it like I did there but the top of the lid has a rim and it's very difficult to get the bubbles out from underneath there uh, it doesn't bother me much because it's, you know, it's on the underside of the lid, so you don't really see it. But I don't know, I mean, maybe isopropyl alcohol or spritz of that would help, but molds like this, where they have that lip, it is very difficult to get the bubbles out completely. So yeah, I thought this would make an interesting sort of, again, a galaxy of colors. <laughs> a mix up just to blend it a bit this next pot is done with alcohol ink and I'm not very good with alcohol ink <laughs> I they're not like mica or anything else you use I'm not really certain how to go about it so I'm gonna to have to do some homework on that to see if I can use the alcohol links that I have to better use and yes um, I realized I hadn't left any space to put anything in so I had to spoon some out I think my problem when I use the alcohol inks I think they're twofold I use too many colors and I tend to agitate them too much. I should just give them a light mix to blend them all together, but I don't. I always go crazy and when I'm doing it, I know I'm doing it, but I can't stop myself. <laughs> so the idea here was just to push the color down the sides to give it a nice streaky effect and I start stirring and I think that's my mistake. I'm just turning all the colors into mud. So yeah, my confession, I'm not very good with alcohol inks. And if you've watched a number of my videos, you'll see that I don't have many projects using alcohol inks. The Hands of Life I did, I used the blue, but that was just a single color. And I wanted to use alcohol ink in that to get the transparency. So here I go again, mixing it all up, just making it like mud. And the end product, you can see some of the colors I have used, but I don't think you can really see the green or the yellow. The blue and the purple and the red tend to dominate, but then I've made it into this kind of mud. So yeah, not my favorite thing to play with.
this is just a quickie of me putting all the pots on my level tray um, and topping some of the things up as well when the glitter one comes on on the right hand side I love that effect that is just mesmerizing to watch and here we are the best part well maybe not the best part because you get to play with all the stuff but I love unmolding day <laughs> as I say you always work it out in your head oh I expect my results to be this quite often they're not they're either better or worse but this one turned out nicely and the pot was perfect as I said I got my spoon and I really dug those colours down in those grooves and it's fine but the lid you'll, you'll see very quickly the underside of there see all the little holes they shouldn't be there <laughs> but it doesn't bother me because as I said it's on the underside of the lid so and it doesn't affect the lid fitting on the pot so I'm not going to panic makes it more unique Yeah, so that's my galaxy jar. <laughs> oh, I like this one. As I say, because I put the glass frit in there, or the crushed glass, it really added to the weight of this, and it feels like the whole thing is made of glass. Love that colour. And despite me jamming all that glass into the mould, it came out really nicely. And the lid, the lid came out nicely, it had one little defect. But again, it's on the underside of the lid, so I'm not gonna panic. And I love the way the lid fits into the little jar. It makes a nice little trinket pot. Oh, yes. <laughs> the crushed glass in the pudding pot, which is, of course, a screw top lid. Which I didn't take into account when I did this. And I've since realized that crushed glass in a screw top lid is maybe not the best choice. <laughs> but having said that, I did like the ombre effect. And the clear iridescent glass, it just disappeared, <laughs> which was fun. Now, you probably won't be able to tell, but when I tried to screw the lid on the pot, now these, these, screw top pots they are smooth they are really nice but when they're made with crushed glass not so much <laughs> you can't hear it but when I'm putting the lid on there it's crunching grinding uh, because the little bits of glass were obviously there was some sticking out and it didn't want to be smooth so I took the lid off and on a few times and cleared it up with a wet wipe but yeah I don't think I'll be using crushed glass in these screw top pots again. And this one, 
is the alcohol ink. Now you remember all the colours I used, I think I used five colours and what a muddy mess it looks on the base. It did improve a little when I started to unmould it but it still doesn't have it just looks muddy to me. You can see that the, the purple and the red dominate. You can't see the other colours really. A bit ambivalent about alcohol inks, at least the way I use them. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do some homework on that. This last pot. I love this colour. It's called Salt and for some reason it reminds me of old-fashioned bottles and jars, almost like a mercury glass effect, but not quite. So I'm rolling the mould down, trying to avoid putting my sticky little fingers on the tattoos, because when you do this, the tattoos remain sticky. So I was trying to not put paw prints all over it. But when I came back the next day to spray it with a protective coat, the resin had completely taken in the tattoos and it was like glass. They weren't sticky anymore. They were fine, which was very unusual. I usually have to spray them. Now, dumb bunny that I am, <laughs> I put the decoration on the wrong side of the lid, forgetting how the lid actually goes into the pot and also forgetting that I would lose half the design going around the side because it sits deep in the pot. Also, this particular lid, as you can see, it was very rocky, it was disfigured in some way. So I'm going to have to remake the lid for that one. Now the one that I was curious about, the rosebuds. Yeah, my poor old hands are getting tired at this point. <laughs> so it's a bit of a struggle. But when you consider this is just dried rosebuds, I was very pleased. Um, the effect is not unpleasing and I'm glad that I left the bottom clear and there were just a few little bits of petals floating around in there. As you can see, there are some bubbles but all in all, and it's very shiny too. Now with the lid, because the rosebuds did float, I got an X-Acto knife and I cut them back to the level of the lid and then I sanded it down, cleaned it up and put clear UV resin on it and it worked out a treat. So I think of all the pots these the ones shaped like this, the rosebud one and the orange one, are my two favourites. I think they're cute little pots and they're very shiny. Well, I had fun making my opulence of pots and I hope you enjoyed that too. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. <laughs>